This is the last of the bonding questions that I had put together, and I put up here a kind of a bonus bonding question to go back and check out. This question I actually had put with, um, I think, solutions, but it's also a bonding question. And in fact, we're going to start with this one. So if you didn't print out the papers and work on the questions and you want to check it out now, check it out now, pause the video, and then come back for the answer. All right, we're going to do question three over here on this side first. We have sodium chloride as a solid, and we're going to compare it to sodium chloride as a liquid. Well, sodium chloride, metal non-metal ionic bonding, we have the transfer of electrons, and when sodium chloride, just like any other ionic compound, is melted or put in water, it splits apart into the ions. In this case, it would be Na+. Plus and Cl minus. What that means is then I have, in the case of a liquid, a substance that can conduct electricity, or in the case of a solution, a solution that can conduct ele electricity. And my answer, of course, here is choice four. All right, let's go back to the other bonding questions with question 17. Question 17 is asking us about the strongest intermolecular forces. And here's our molecules. Well, you have to look at the formula for the molecule, and since you have two different nonmetals, you're going to have what's called a dipole-dipole attraction, but there are very strong dipole-dipole attractions that scientists call hydrogen bonding. And hydrogen bonding is the strong attraction that occurs between molecules of H2O, NH3, and HF. So, what we're looking at right there is the answer, HF. The other three choices do have dipole-dipole attraction, but HF is the strongest because it's hydrogen bonding. Question 18, which group 16 element combines with hydrogen to form a compound that has the strongest hydrogen bonding between its molecules. Again, hydrogen bonding. It's hydrogen bonding with oxygen, hydrogen bonding with nitrogen, or hydrogen bonding with fluorine, and there it is. Choice one. Number 19, which atom in the ground state has a stable electron configuration? You've already seen this in 2015 on one of the other videos. Stable electron configuration means noble gas, you go through the four choices, they didn't give you the symbols, but once again, we're looking here, Oop, I didn't mean to exclude there, helium, starting with helium, at the noble gases. The only tricky part is they didn't give you the symbols, they gave you the names. But you look them up and you realize neon, N-E, is my answer because it's in the noble gas column. Finally, question 20, which statement explains why CO2 molecule is nonpolar. So when you look at the formula here, I have carbon dioxide. Hopefully, for some molecules, you've actually memorized what they look like, their structure or their Lewis structure looks like. I would suggest that. Look at the materials that are given by your teacher. Definitely, there's molecules that you are expected to be able to recognize and draw. Carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a molecule that because I have bonds between two different nonmetals, inside I have polar bonds, but this is a symmetrical molecule, which means it's a nonpolar molecule. And that's exactly what we're looking for here. The molecule has a symmetrical distribution of charge because it's nonpolar. Your chemistry teacher might have used this shorthand SNAP, S-N-A-P, so I'm just going to put a line. So symmetrical is nonpolar as far as the molecule. Asymmetric is used sometimes to describe a polar molecule. You've looked at here the last of the bonding questions from the 2015 Regents exams. Do as many questions as you can. Keep reviewing. Work hard and good luck.